Welcome to Indy's Real Estate Gurus. I'm Rick Ripma, your hardworking mortgage guy, and I've been in real estate and mortgages for over 34 years. My team and I believe in custom tailored loans, not the one size fits all approach. We believe there is a right mortgage for you, and we believe we are the team to deliver it. And I'm Ian Arnold, part of Rick's hardworking mortgage team. I've been in the financial industry for 15 years, helping customers rebuild their credit, get the best possible interest rate. And I also have a passion helping you secure your overall real estate dreams. And even if you're anything like me, pay your home off even faster. And today we're honored to have Susan Forrest. Now, Susan is coming all the way from Irvington. Yes. And you're with United Real Estate. Is United that Real Estate. And I'm on the Doug Dilling Group. Doug or Dilling the, Group. Or the Dilling Group Real Estate. Okay. And, and so... And you just you just joined that team. Yes, May first. May first. So you joined that team. Um, now, before real estate, I, I think you said it goes back forty years. So that's a long time. Um, you must have been one or two. So what? Yes. What was it like? <laughs> you know, what what was your life like? Where'd you grow up? You know, what was your life like before real estate? Um, before real estate, I grew up um, two hundred and twenty six in US thirty one. Okay. Just straight up the street. So is that Westfield or Noblesville? Cicero. Cicero. Okay. And back in the day, um, while in high school, uh, a high school classmate had just graduated high school and she had gotten her real estate license. I think she was 19 at the time. And of course, I'm thinking at the time, wow, that's kind of interesting. I think that's something that I'd like to do. And then, you know, as you know, college happens, life happens. And then 2018, the husband said, do it. I'd hit a dead end job. Wasn't going anywhere. Why am I staying here? And he said, do it. And, it, and, and, it's, and you've done it. He was right. Yeah. He, uh, he just said, jump, jump out of that plane with a perfectly good parachute and go for it. That's awesome. I haven't looked it's back. nice to have that kind of support. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. He must be an impressive man. Yes, he is. Yeah. He's not sitting here anywhere near <laughs> us, right? Yeah, he is. <laughs> he is. And he's also, he's a retired police officer. Retired from IMPD. Okay. Uh, 27 years. Uh, wow. That's a lot. That's a long time doing that. Now, he was a detective? Uh, he had spent some years as a, as a patrolman on the street. Then a detective for 11 years, and then he became a sergeant until the end of his career. Awesome. Yeah, that's, that's a, I, when I was young, I wanted to do that job. It's a hard job. It is a hard job, and it's I'm glad I didn't. I went, I actually went into the Air Force, and to, to be in a police, I got hurt, so I did never made it to that, that point. They had to, I ruined my knee. Um, and then I never wanted to do it again after I found out. Um, what you had to do for how much you got paid. Right. I thought that wasn't a really good opportunity for me. <laughs> I, I like, I like other things. So 2018, you, you looked at it and you go, okay, this is it. Doug pushes you. He says, go, go for it. Now you get into real estate. How did you get going? Cause that's always a tough thing for people and to get going in real estate. Oh, I just, that's that's a hard question. Um, I started out at Century Twenty One Sheets downtown, okay. and it was what what does everybody do when they first start real estate prospecting? Yeah, it's ninety percent. That's ninety percent of your job is prospecting, calling and calling and calling and just driving your sphere nuts. Come on, who wants to buy a house <laughs> yeah. or wants to sell a house? Yeah. But I was out actually, uh, my the very first house I'd gotten under contract was three weeks after I got my license. Wow, that's and fast. I didn't think it was. I, I was expecting the 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 the, un, the incredible, and I want to get one my first week out. Well, I got it three weeks out. Um, I was help helping to trap a dog over off of Pleasant Run Parkway in the golf course in Irvington. And um, very nice lady. It's like, yeah, I want to buy a house. Will you help me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't help you. Yes. So, yeah. And my the very first house I ever sold in my entire life was 1401 North Audubon. Really? Wow. So you were out. So you, you do dog rescue. Yes. Correct? Yes. And that's, I think, near and dear to your heart. 
Okay, so you rescue, is there a certain type of dog you rescue or do you rescue? Um, I work with Chihuahua Rescue of Indiana, okay. um, but we're really Small Dog Incorporated. <laughs> okay, so any small dog? Any, really, honestly, any small dogs. Okay. Um, my favorite rescue happened March 3rd, 2020. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, I, um, God, I love that dog. <laughs> Listen to me, I'm going. Do you still Whoa. have the dog? Yes, her name's Piper. I thought you might. <laughs> she has her own business card. <laughs> oh, she does? Yes. Does she sell real estate also? She helps me. Does she? Good. She, she runs around in the car with me. Okay, she goes to show at home. signs. Um, I don't take her out when it's super hot or super uh, cold. Okay. So she only runs around with me during the uh, the in-between months. She sounds like my wife. She only goes out when it's perfect weather. Fair weather. <laughs> yeah. um, no, um, my rescue director called me and said, hey, I need you to go up and pick up this dog up in the villages of West Clay. Okay. It's like, what kind of dog? What are we looking at? Um, a 30-pound cardigan corgi. Oh, wow. Wow, the world's largest chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> so, and she's been with me ever since. She was literally eating a $2 million home. She was tearing it down. Wow. Tearing it down. She Chewing on woodwork, furniture, floors. You they just couldn't that. do it anymore. She, well, she's she's a mild-mannered girl who needs a little bit of a direction. And... Mom was a nurse down at IU Riley. Dad does has his own business, and he's doing that 80, 90 hours a week. Right. And they just really didn't have time for her. And she's a dog who needs. Right, a lot of time. She needs, she needs time. Yeah, she needs definitely. somebody who's not afraid to be alpha dog. And now she's fine. That's good. Yeah, she's my a good dog. My wife's a huge animal lover. She has four cats and a bird. And and Rick. Yes. And <laughs> I don't know if Doug feels the same way, but I'm, I, I mean, I, when we had kids, I was below the kids. Now I'm below the kids in the animals. I think the animals are on top. <laughs> <laughs> is it that way in your house? No. No? No. No. Yeah, that's, the way, no. that's the way my wife is. It's, it's kind of crazy. Hold on, hold on. Should we ask the husband first? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Probably. Well, now what I'm he's thankful. Not on mic. What I'm thankful for is I bring these these uh, foster dogs home and I don't tell him in advance. And the look I get, and he wants to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> but what I like is is um, it's usually by the next day who's sitting with him when he's having coffee before work, and he's definitely is is involved with working with these animals we had one come in god what year was that sam jackson we had one he says chocolate brown chihuahua looked exactly like jewels from pulp fiction oh really okay oh, just that that mean look the kid the dog was just missing the jerry curl wig <laughs> okay. did you get that for him? <laughs> uh, no no sam he lives now 10 minutes from us. Okay. Off of Thompson over on the southeast side. Oh, he was a little stinker. But the, the gentleman we had picked him up from on the surrender, um, he hates people, hates everyone, hates, especially hates women, hates this, hates, 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 hates. Got him home. Next morning, Doug's got a dog in one arm and coffee in the other hand, and he dog's just happy as a, as a clam. Well, I guess it didn't hate everybody. No, he doesn't. Didn't have, a, didn't have a good life or something. Something. Yeah. Well, if yeah. you would have seen where we picked him up at. Yeah. You just never know. Well, we should probably get more into real estate. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can sit and talk and talk. Yeah. Well, you know, it's my, like I said, my wife's an animal lover, so she can talk about animals all the time. Yes. Specifically birds. We're, my family's really into birds. So so you you got going in real estate and, and now you're on a team. So um, it's always interesting to me. It seems like a team is a very valuable thing to be on. Yes. Especially when you're new. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, speaking from my point of view, when I moved over to United about month number 10 of my career, at that point, United really was only taking people who had proven, tr proven track records. Um, and 
what I lost leaving my old brokerage and moving over to United was I need, I need that collaborative. Right. And I, and ever since I'd gotten there, I'd been seeking that collaborative and finally have found my people yeah, with the good. Dilling group. It's really about finding your people. Once you find your people, that's really where the success starts because customer service as in anything starts internally and then it translates out to your clients. Right. And being happy at work and, and having a good group to work with yes. makes a huge difference. Plus, I'm sure they have great experience and you have great experience. So I think that always helps too. By you know, we all need, I've been in the business a long time. I still it still helps to have somebody to bounce things off of. And I agree. There, there as many things as I've seen, there are times something comes up, it's like, man, I don't think I've ever seen this before. <laughs> Every transaction I've done has been different. Yeah. Every it's, single one. It's fun. It's part of the fun of the industry. Yes. And it's part of the difficulty of the industry. Yes. Yeah. So it it, it just, I don't know. I, I think it's, I know it's really important to have a team to be on. And I think it's the difference between like when you had that person you knew that went into real estate at 19. Back then they didn't have teams. It was really, I think it was much harder back then for a real estate agent to get started because you were on your own. Now you have some support. And it really does seem to help. All the agents I've talked to, I'm, all isn't fair. Most of the agents I talk to, they they credit a mentor and their team for really yes. helping them get going. Oh, I've had, I probably have three different mentors. I had a mentor for contracts, a mentor for just, okay, how do I approach dealing with this client? Another mentor, we bounce technology back and forth with each other. I spent all of lockdown with one of my friends, Joe. Um, also on the Dilling team, just throwing technology back and forth to each other. What better time? What are you going to do? Sit and watch some marathon, a Downton Abbey marathon? Right. Yeah. Or I'm going to sit there and start bouncing technology back and forth and start really refining and honing my skills on right. the technology. Yeah. And there's a lot of technology. Oh, my word. Yes. Yeah. And so, I'm not afraid of it. Yeah. That, I think that's the biggest problem for most people is they're afraid of it. So they, I know my, my wife, I've had to get her over the fact, you know, it's like, you just got to do it. You're not going to break anything. Just do it. Yeah. Right. Just don't. If it says, are you sure you want to delete this? You're deleting it. Don't do that. Okay. <laughs> Read what it right. is. <laughs> but other than that, there's not much you can really damage. You just right. have to do it. So what technology are you really into at this or really, you know, do you feel like is a big piece of what you're doing? The chat. The AI. Okay. I'm starting to learn that. I want to get through that, understand it, figure out how I'm going to be able to use it best in my business. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really into Chat GPT. Yeah. I think it's phenomenal. Some of the things it's been able to do for me is incredible. If you just, you just have to give it enough instruction to get what you want. Well. Uh, one of my teammates, um, Bill, he he had it write a whole poem, and I can't remember what it was about, but he had it write a whole poem. This is crazy technology. Yes, it is, and you can tell it to write it like Walt Whit Whitman, or you can. We we had somebody who didn't wouldn't they didn't get us their bio, so I just for fun I had it write a bio as Mark Twain. It was, it was funny. It was yeah, that's good. Because then we started reading it and everything, and oh, it was it was funny. That's great. Yeah. Oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah, the things it can do are just crazy. And I've only just started sticking my toe in the water with it, really understanding it, because you know, there's all those naysayers of, here's how great this technology is, but at the same time, I'm also coming from the legal background where I came from and I'm looking at also how it can be abused. So it's just, yeah. yes, there are some things there, but, and they, they have tried to put stops in there for that. I know, but you know, there's always going to, there's always going to be, somebody there's always going to be able somebody. To work around. What, what we have to do is just use it the way it's intended to be used. Yes. And like for me, I have it right. I'll have it right things and then I'll go in and, and correct it and I'll change some of what it says. So I 
did it. But it's always, I don't know, for me, it's easier to rewrite something than fresh write something. I'm sure there's other people that are great at just writing it, but I, I, I can do it, read it, then I can go through it and I can change what I want changed. And I think that's really helpful. Yeah. I, so I'm really looking forward to diving in and getting a deep dive into it and really understanding that technology yeah. better. It's it's phenomenal. All right. So I want people to be able to get in contact with you. Yes. So what is the best way they can get in contact with you if they're looking to buy or sell or even have just questions about real estate? Uh, you can reach me at 317-679-9447. That's my direct mobile. Call me anytime, just not between midnight and 6 p.m. Or they can call. Your voicemail is always available. Yeah. It is, I'll bet. <laughs> Although, it's, I've had friends of mine who've said, oh, other real estate friends in other states. Oh, you know, Susan, I don't know why you're always available. Don't you ever give yourself a time off? No. Because I have to be there. Right. If you have to ask me the one thing, the one thing I think a lot of agents kind of lose be available. Yeah. Pick up the darn phone. Yeah. You pick it up or at least call back in a timely fashion. Yes. You know, but I, I don't think anybody re thinks that when they call you at 3 a.m. in the morning that they're expecting you to pick no. up or that they're expecting you to call back in 15 minutes. Right. You know, for me, I, my phone goes off at nine o'clock and it doesn't come back on till eight o'clock. Now, it doesn't mean I won't check it. But it doesn't it doesn't inform me that anything came in. Right. Because I've watched my kids, especially, they get no sleep because they leave their phone right next to their head. And every time it went off, they would jump up and, and, and answer this thing. And, you know, it's like a chain. Yeah. And I didn't want to do that. Um, so I, 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 I agree 100 percent. You got to be available, but you also have to have some boundaries. You got to have some boundaries. You have to have a life. I I won't do calls after 10, 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure in an emergency situation where you have a client, you know, you're working on a closing, there's an issue, whatever, an inspection, whatever it is, then you know you, you're available, right? But even then, what can you actually do at 11 o'clock at night? Yeah. I don't disagree with him. Who else is available? Who? You, you, can't, ha you can't really do anything. Uh, Waffle House is always open. That, and that That's is That's right. <laughs> the coffee help. is always See? on. There you go. <laughs> and I can always set up searches. Yeah. See? See? I'm trying to help you out and have some time off. This guy over here, he's trying to make you work more. I don't mind. All right. That's just the thing I'm saying. Hey, now, the more she works, the more the pets she can take care of. That's true. Hey, I love what I do. And if you would like to get a hold of Ian or I, go to hardworkingmortgageguys.com. That's hardworkingmortgageguys.com, or you can call 317 672 1938. That's 317 672 1938. And thank you for joining and listening to Indy's Real Estate Gurus. The gurus we interview share valuable insights. They reveal their strengths, personalities, and how they'll work for you. While we hardworking mortgage guys secure your best mortgage, real estate gurus work hard too. They avoid problems the, the amateurs don't see. They listen and they find unrealized opportunities. If you're buying or selling a home, a real estate guru is a valuable asset. If you're even thinking of buying or selling a home, keep listening and definitely call one of Indy's real estate gurus. All right. So we're going to take a little side step. I know we've done this a little bit, taking side steps with Alpha Real Estate, but I want to get to know you more. So okay. say I do take away your phone. You cannot work for 24 hours. She just told you how important uh, it is. I know. I know. But what we're going to say so one of our team members are going to help her out during this time. So what would I do in that 24 hours? What would you do in that 24 hours for fun? Probably get on my bike. If I could get on a plane, I'd fly somewhere. I'm I'm a travel junkie. Oh, are you? Yeah. So where where's your favorite place to travel? Uh, I've lived in Ireland. Oh, you did? I've lived overseas. How awesome is that? How long yeah. did you live there? Uh, it was for two months. Okay. company I was working for at the time. Uh, they had a program once a year. They would send employees over for a month or two and live and work in a country, in a different country where they had different offices. So how many people volunteered for that? I can see a lot of people raising their hand going, yeah, send me, send me, send me. You, it, it was very competitive. Uh, the company I worked for was RCI Time Show. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, oh, they probably get between 20 and 40 people applying every year. 
the first time I applied, I didn't get it. Mm -hmm. I was an alternate. Um, but yeah, you got to do a whole presentation. It's, it's a big sell of yourself to be able to do this. And you go over and you're actually doing what you do here in the States and in another country. Yeah. So the one thing I learned when I was living in Ireland for that time is that the Brits, they will spend five bucks to save 75 pence. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they will fight you over every little penny. Okay. Oh, yeah. It is funny how every culture is a little different. Yeah. Especially in negotiating and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Definitely. The negotiation is very different over there. Yeah. So... It was I, fun living in Ireland. I watched a net Netflix. I think it was Netflix. It might have been Amazon, but they had a show, and it was a guy took us took you around Ireland and all the different things that they have there, and it is a beautiful country. Oh, it's gorgeous. It is stunningly beautiful, and some of the most polite people you will ever meet in your entire life. As long as you're not trying to sell them something. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, real estate there is kind of interesting. Um, RCI located one of their businesses there and a couple of friends of mine that I've had since then were also purchasing houses right about that time I was visiting. They pay their property taxes up front at the time of the build of the home. Really? Yes. For the whole, for a year, for how long? Permanently. All of it. At that time, this was 2006. Wow. Do you, do they and Do I, they pay cash for the houses? No, they they still okay. finance them, but it, it's just it's how they do that. It's just a little bit different. And when you buy a house, you buy a shell. So think of a house that has a white walled kitchen and a white walled bathroom. There's there's no fixtures in it. Hmm. You buy the shell. This is if you're buying a new build. If you're doing a new build, wow, you're buying a shell. And then you install what you want. Well, that is good in some ways and not so good in others. Right. <laughs> right. Now, that was as of 2006, but it was really rather interesting how they were doing that. Yeah, the builders must love that. You know, it's people, uh, no, I want this one. No, I changed my mind. I want this. It's just like, all right, here's, here's the walls. Have a nice day. Yeah. Then you hire out your contractors to install the kitchen. And the bathroom fixtures. Yeah, I don't know. It's I'm too used to the our way, I guess. But it, it just seems to me it's it's part of why I think our our housing market is so good compared to most of the world. Yeah, because we have financing. We finish that. I mean, there's just so many things that we do. I mean, I can't imagine some. I, I can't imagine somebody wanting to buy a new building if it's not done. It's it's. <laughs> I guess it works culturally how they do it. Yeah. Well, you know, have you ever looked at how homes are bought and sold in say, Pakistan? Mm -mm. No. It's a graduated ownership. So let's say seller owns 100% of the home. You put a 10% down payment on it. And then it's almost similar to like a land contract. Similar to, it's a flavor of it. But as the buyer pays the seller payments, you own more of the house. So it's doing this the okay. whole time and repairs are made on that same prorated basis. Wow. So if the seller owns 80% of the house and you own as the buyer 20% of the house, guess how the, the repairs are made. Sellers do paying for 80% of that repair. You're paying for 20% of that repair. And as you own more and more and more, and this is why homes are owned for longer there. Yeah. That, Whereas yeah. for here, that's not how it happens. No, that that's tough as a seller. Yeah. And you're financing it for them. Yeah, you're doing a self-finance. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. I couldn't imagine if somebody passed away, the whole probate issue. Oh, yeah, that'd have to be. That'd, they must have a, they must have be a an, way. To me, if, and I'm sitting here just applying our rule of law to that situation. Yeah. That's a nightmare. That would be, whew, that would be tough. That's a nightmare. Yeah. I can see where that would be a problem. All right. So, so I know Rick has a very 
important question. Oh, you're you. going to let me say it? I'm going to let you do it. Question? I'm going to let you do it. All I'll, right. I'll this give is my you favorite this. question. That's why he's letting me do it. Okay. So what is your, what would you say your superpower or superpowers are? Tenacity and empathy. You know, it's tenacity, I think, is because I, I tend to be the same way. When I, I used to sell cars, mm -hmm. and when I sold cars, they called me a bulldog because once I got something, I just didn't let go. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's really important. I think it's important for your buyers and your sellers when you're working with them. Um, it, it just seems like, like, how do you see that benefiting them? Because I see a bunch of ways that it benefits somebody with your with the tenacity. Well, it's tenacity, mental strength, uh, being willing to work through the hard problems, the hard questions, negotiation. I just, I don't like giving up and I don't like to lose. Yeah. Well, you know, there was, it wasn't that long ago when sometimes it'd take 10, 12 offers before you got a house. Right. Right. That takes tenacity on both the yes. the buyers in the in the real estate agent or the seller in the real estate agent the seller not so much buyer in the real estate agent's part. Right. So that has to be a big deal because you don't giving up ends it for everybody. And so it's mm -hmm. it, and then there's always the process isn't a quick process to buy it buy a home and no. sell a home. So I, I can see where that's a that's a huge deal. Well, I like to go back to to I'm I've, I'm still trying to find the interview that. Bodie Miller gave years ago, a couple of years ago. Okay. It was right, I think right after he retired from skiing. Um, he said, what separates a World Cup athlete from a weekend warrior is mental toughness. Is paraphrasing basically what that whole interview was about. And that to me is what gets a person to the next level in success whether it be in your personal goals or in your professional goals, is just being tough and getting there. Yeah, being tough and, and having the tenacity to stay, because that's really part of it is you, it's probably the same, kind of the same thing. You decide you're gonna do something, you just do it. Right, because the day I got my license, I decided then I was gonna be in this business five years from now, and I, yeah. I made it. And for those who don't know, that is 90% of the people drop out in the first three years. Yeah. So that is a big accomplishment. Not only have you been in it five years, you're, you're doing a phenomenal job. Thank you. So it's not just that you made it, you, you're, you're doing great. Yeah. And, and I mean, we consider you a guru or you wouldn't be here. So we know you, I, we know your numbers, you know, we see your reviews. It's very obvious you're, you're a phenomenal real estate agent. Um, so I do have a question. Sure. What do you think we get, we see a lot of real estate agents come in and then we talk to customers and they have their pre mindset set on what they think a real estate agent does. So what do you think the misconceptions about what some people see realtors do or, Oh, one that just happened recently. Wow. What you do looks so easy. I think I'll go get my real estate license. And what they're not seeing is, as buyers or sellers is what really goes on behind the curtain. The man behind the curtain, Wizard of Oz thing. Yeah. They just don't see it. Yeah. But they're so caught up in their own personal situation. They don't see everything that we do. Yeah. I, I think that um, it's somewhat of a compliment. Um, in fact, I take it as a complete compliment. Because it's kind of like watching a Olympic skater. Yeah. And you watch them and you go, well, I can do that. It, they make it look so easy. And then you can't even stand up on the skates. Yeah. So to me, it's like when somebody tells me, I, I, I had a good friend. get He wasn't a friend at the time, but he became a good friend. He, when I was with the builder, he built, built, bought a house with me. And he said, hey, I want to, if you can do it, anybody can sell houses come on board, you know, and because he, they don't see all the things. And I, and I think it's TV, especially for real estate agents, these, these HG TV shows and things like that, make it look completely different than what it actually is. Right. It's HG TV is a blessing and a curse. Yeah. It is definitely a blessing and a curse. Has it made all of our presentations of our homes better? Yes. Absolutely. When we go to list a home, do our homes look better? I think it's pushed all of us agents to do better 
on our listing presentations. But I think it's created some unrealistic expectations uh, with buyers. Yeah. So on, on buyers and also on people who are looking at it thinking, I want to be a real estate agent. This looks easy. Yeah. Look at that. You do this, you don't do much, and you make all this money and you drive nice cars. And that's not the way it is. It's no. very difficult. Spend a lot of hours driving around not getting paid. Yeah. And and it's and it's not what they see on TV is the cherry. Yes. They see the result. Yes. And not the journey. Yes. I agree. It's kind of like watching somebody or seeing somebody who's successful, just phenomenally successful. And they go, oh, yeah, he's an overnight success. That's easy, more easily said than done. Yeah. You talk to the person, it's, it's 20 years of, of yes. overnight success. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It takes a lot of hard work. I mean, you're an exception that you sold a home in the first three weeks or you, you that's got incredible. Got it under contract, yeah. Yeah, got it under contract. Most people don't do that. Yep. Most, I think the average is right, right around six months of what we've heard. And I had year. eight closed by the time I moved over to United in May of 19. Yeah, see, that's phenomenal. <laughs> so, so, and it's, of course, at that time, I'm sitting here, no, no, that can't be right. No, this is, I did, everybody does it this way. They don't. No, no, they don't. So, what, what is, if somebody would like to buy or sell a home and they want to work with you, what's the best way, Susan, to get a hold of you? My at my phone, 317-679-9447. Text me, call me, or email me at Susan at dillinggrouprealestate.com. And Dilling is D-I-L-L-I-N-G. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, because that, that one could be a tricky one. Yeah. Not for us, but for some <laughs> people we know. <laughs> hey, I just want to make sure it was spelled correctly for all my stuff. Hey, now, now you wanted you talked about my superpower. Yes. Okay, tenacity. What got me there? Well, what got me there was um, back in nineteen ninety eight, nineteen ninety nine. A couple of days ago. Yeah, a few nights ago. Um, my then husband took me to a uh, USOC event okay fundraiser all right um my first sport is horses and so i got to go watch i got to meet joe montana oh really wow. his wife rode uh metal classes and so i got to watch open jumping and some hunters my first love and i met a young lady who was out fundraising to buy a bobsled a bobsled? A bobsled. Okay. And she, uh, at that point, I was in the process of losing 100 pounds. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, and she said, what do you, what do you, you're tall enough and you're strong enough. Why not try out for the team? Why not make a bid for the bob, for the women's bobsled team? The 2002 Salt Lake Games was the first time. The United States was, or they were going to allow women to push sleds. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, it's a great thing. Something to celebrate. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you stand next to these German women, uh, they had two, four inches and 50 pounds on me. These women were Amazons. I tried. I gave it a good shot. <laughs> but it had to be fun. Oh my God. A great experience, right? Oh yeah. I've been down bobsled runs. It's the most amazing experience. So we've now established that you're crazy. A little bit. Yeah. Cause that's, I, I don't, okay. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So it's, I mean, but that would scare me to death. Aren't all real estate agents a little crazy? <laughs> I'm not going to say that, but I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to disagree with you either. I'm all realtors a little crazy. No. Um, I'm going to use that line next time I go. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But no, I went up and I, at the Salt Lake uh, Winter Park, um, push sleds and trained, training to be, I, would, I was going to be a brakeman because at that point they were only doing two man sleds for the women. And I would have been a brakeman. 
um, we broke the land speed record on the track. Oh, I really? My first one. Wow. 87 miles an hour. I'm sorry. I'd be scared to death. That's that. That would be. Yeah. That's incredible. My second ride down, we flipped the sled. That would have been fun. Yeah. And What's I that said, like? Uh, it's it's a little frightening. The nice thing about the two man sleds, you are down more inside the sled. It's unlike the four man sled where your head is more up above and breaks the plane of the sled. Um, yeah, I crawled back in and kept doing it. Now, do they teach you how to, when it, when it's going to flip, what you got to do to like yeah. protect yourself? You just, you, you stay down as far down inside the sled as possible. Keep the, make sure that the sled is protecting you as much as yeah. possible. But the fun part was before I even crawled in a sled and even pushed it, they're showing you videos of sled wrecks. And then you're signing a waiver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, what a great experience. Yeah. And training all the years I did doing that brought me to this. Okay. It brought me to real estate. Well, probably, it probably also, it, that it's that tenacity. Yeah. You know, it, it, it probably helped even cement that even more if you, because that's yes. a, that's a tough thing. That, yeah. It's. You're getting up every single day and you're doing, even on your rest days, you're doing something towards the big goal. You're never not working towards that goal. So when you were saying, or I had said, I'm always working, there's always something going on working towards the big goal. Even on my time off, there's always something going on. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. I mean, I, Email. If- Email calls, but I, I do a lot of, um, things on, on the computer, you know, editing, editing these shows, you know, doing editing the videos, doing videos, you know, doing all that. And I enjoy it. So it's not really work. Like I just spent a bunch of time on a program called Canva designing some, Oh, I love Canva. Yeah. It's phenomenal. Designing some material because it's, it's, it's fun sometimes to have that create, you know, be, be creative. Yeah, it it's is. Relaxing. And it's amazing. You can sit there and start something and an hour and a half later you look up and you go, Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing how fast. Yeah. Goes Rick's wife goes. texts him every night. Uh, are you coming home? Yeah. And he's like, Oh, sorry. Lost track of time. <laughs> yeah, that no, the biggest complaint anymore. I have is we're sitting at a restaurant and the phone goes off. Yep. Yeah. I get the evil eye. <laughs> well it's not your fault the phone went off no you can't control that it's only he your wants, it's your control whether you answer it or not he wants me to turn it off we were on vacation last last november right after thanksgiving the phone kept going off it's like hey it's how often you get to go on vacation and secure two contracts while you're on vacation right yeah we talked to a, an agent who was in um desert storm and he sold like four houses while he was in de- desert storm because he had people here to help him out but he said he paid for the service so he had his phone the whole time and that's beautiful yeah i mean it, it technology changed it, this business changed our world it it yes. totally and some things are not so good it's not so good that we can never get away from it maybe but it's really nice when you can do something like that and like it's for me, it's like I mean, I could, if I could, if I'm in Florida and I can answer my phone and take care of something in ten minutes, why not? Yeah, right. Normally for us, you go on vacation, you make no money, right? Because we're not salaried, we're commissioned. Right. Right. Real estate agents are commissioned. <laughs> Absolutely. People are commissioned. So if you can answer the phone and and make a little money and help somebody out, what's wrong with that? Hey, I like to thank the KOA out in Dubois, Wyoming, for letting me use their super uber secure uh, internet connection one year. I wrote an offer, got it secured. So are you a camper? Uh, we camp. You camp? Okay. We what? travel by bike. That's another one. Motorcycle? No. Bicycle. Pedal. Bicycle. That's good. That's good. I love to bike. Oh, it's fun. Yeah. But I, I the horses. You said you... you said your first love is horses. Yeah. So 
you and it sounds like you write English. Hunt seat. Okay. Hunt seat, right. I I grew up riding at Woodland Springs Riding Academy. <gasps> oh my God. Yeah. We talked about that. Yes. Yes. So, Small world. Yeah. And I my dad ha had a horse. We had a thoroughbred that was too slow to run. <laughs> he became a jumper. <laughs> and I was not very good. My older brother was very good. He traveled with their their travel squad, but I wasn't very good. But I was enjoyed it until one fell on me and ruined my leg. But other than that, I had a good time. So do you still ride? Nope. I kind of gave that up. It's definitely after college, I rode in the Midwest in the, and around central Indiana and then went off to college and rode in CAA down at IUPUI. Oh, did you really? Okay. Yeah. And um, it just got too expensive. Yeah, it's expensive. Just got too expensive. Um, laid out, laid low on that, and then then hit into the bobsledding because I'd lost all that weight. I was bored. I needed something to do. Oh, I'll just let's go push a bobsled today. <laughs> <laughs> you know that has never come up in my conversation. What, you know what? I'm sled? bored. I think I'm going to go bobsled. Yep. <laughs> hey, you know, you only go around once. That's true. I'm not doing it in a bobsled. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now you can you can go up to Lake Placid or over to the Utah uh, Winter Park and take a ride on a bobsled in a four man. I think it looks awesome. It's great. It looks awesome. However, when they sh uh, and I used to love roller coasters. Okay. But they don't show me a video beforehand of all the crashes. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> they do that in driver's ed. Yeah. No, they show you was, all these wrecks and then you learn what not to do. I was young then. Oh, wait, they had horse carriage then. I Sorry. Then. They probably didn't have that. I was young then. <laughs> I, I wasn't scared then. You know, it's like, that's not going to happen to me. Now I realize it could happen to me and a bobsled's not where I'm going to do it. Well, we haven't got to the question of the week, You're right. which is usually oh, your I'm first sorry. car. So I'll ask that here in a second. But Rick's first car was a wagon, uh, was a covered wagon. So okay, uh, so there wasn't videos of horse wrecks and stuff like oh. that. We called it a gremlin. <laughs> <laughs> but what was your first car? A Ford Escort, a maroon Ford Escort. Oh, you were styling. I hated that car. <laughs> I understand why. Plus maroon. Hey, I like red cars. I That's signature yeah. color, red, anything red. I like red cars. I like red cars. Now I, ride, now I drive around in a red Mini Cooper that my oh. husband hates. Because it's too small? No. It's expensive. Oh, yes. It is. It is. It's, I mean, basically, if no, if you do not know, it's a BMW. It is. Break uh, my wallet. Yep. Whereas okay. 30 years ago, it was bought my wife. Now it's break my wallet. It's They have got sensors. It's so tricked out on sensors. If something's even slightly off, your check engine light goes on. But yeah. when they're good, they're fun to drive. And especially around these roundabouts here in Carmel. They are fun. Sorry, officers. <laughs> but yes, they are fun. I love my Mini Cooper. I... Even though it's expensive, you love it. Yes. Will you buy another one? I'm not allowed to. <laughs> so you're never getting rid of this one. I will never get rid of this one. Yeah, this that's... one will become a garage queen. Yeah, that's all right. I love cars. So if you find a car you love, you should try to keep it's, it. Yeah. My husband's car is a... Um, he can't give me too much of a problem about my expensive car. What does he drive? 2001 Jeep Cherokee with the vintage and line six engine. 232 or 258? Four liter. Oh, the big one. Yeah. It's the good engine. Yeah. It's the one everybody yeah. wants. Yeah, that's a good car. Yeah. And he called me from the interstate at 540 in the morning, July, January 7th, 2022. Yeah, the truck quit. I'm sitting at 65, just south of the 465 interchange. At what time? 540 in the morning. So she picks up her phone at 540 in the morning, people. So if you want to call if it's her. it's from him, <laughs> yes, I will pick it up. 
And she probably said, you don't like me answering the phone when I'm sleeping, so I'll call you back in a couple hours. I hope you have a good time. So now we get the truck hauled over to our, our trusty handy dandy people over at Strom. And, uh, hey, Doug, you need a new engine. Oh, no, a whole yeah, new engine. Yeah, a whole new engine. And I only needed to put in a turbo in my car. Did you tell him he needs to change his oil in his car? No. <laughs> I didn't, but it's that that vehicle. It's an those, old it's an older vehicle. But yeah, it was great, the, those are great vehicles. It was the original engine. Yeah, those are great vehicles. It was the original engine. It's, Do you want to ask your favorite question? Yes, I will. Uh -oh. So now I'm scared. Oh, not nothing you can be scared about because you'll enjoy this one. Okay. What do you think your fo favorite memory of doing a deal was? That's not fair. Too many. We That's usually hear that from the good agents. Too many. I'll, I'll, I'll sh just pick one. Hmm. My North Salem sale. A uh, couple moving back from Florida who left to move to Florida. Now we're coming back for grandkids. A lot of people do that. Oh, I love these people. Absolutely dearest, dearest friends now. Um, and that was another thing I was told. Don't be friends with your with your clients. I absolutely love these people. They are dear to my heart. Um, they bought this beautiful home on four plus acres. And it was a VA okay. finance. And it's kind of geeky and I apologize. But, you know, the, the lender called Tidewater. And if we all know what Tidewater is, it's potentially coming in low. Um, the result was it actually ended up appraising for thirty-two thousand dollars more than what they were. Wow! What they had purchased. That's before. awesome. I was like, yeah. I mean, it's they're just dear people. Yeah, that's awesome. Dear, dear people. And he used to own Handyman by the Hour. If you know the company, oh, floating really? around Carmel. Yeah. That was this was kind of his sphere of area. Wow. He used to own that. I. <clears throat> I remember the name, but I don't, I don't, I, I, I never used them, but I like the name handyman by the hour yeah. is like a perfect name. Yeah. Are they still out there? I don't. Yeah. He sold the business to, um, one of his, one of the guys who used okay. to work for him, but, um, Tim used to be also a, a coworker down at one America when I worked for them. Oh, really? Okay. But not at the same time. Okay. Many, many years before. So. We had a lot of people in common. Yeah. That's always nice. Yes. Yes. It is. Yeah. So if somebody needed to get a hold of you, they have some real estate needs. What's the best way? 317-679-9447 or by email, Susan at DillingGroupRealEstate.com. That's Dilling is D-I-L-L-I-N-G. Yes, sir. And to get a hold of Ian or I, go to HardworkingMortgageGuys.com. That's HardworkingMortgageGuys.com. Or you can call 317-672-1938. That's 317-672-1938. And please follow us for more Indies Real Estate Gurus. A reminder, if you have any friends, family, or coworkers looking to buy, sell, or refinance, let us know. We'd be more than happy to help you. Susan, thank you for joining us on our show. It's been a pleasure having you on it. Well, I was hoping we'd get into talking about the my home in Irvington. <laughs> <laughs> well, we wanted to, but we thought it best to stay away from your home in Irvington. Oh, it's not a big deal. When I when I found that house. Up to that point, my husband, we had probably seen 50 houses. My poor realtor, he probably needed a pedicure and a massage after dealing with my husband. He hated every single house up to that point. We were, the morning we found it, <laughs> we're driving up or up. Uh, Hawthorne Avenue or Hawthorne Lane in Doug's great big police car. And he's looking at something. This is too close to Washington Street. I'm going to hate it. <laughs> he hated everything up to that point. Gets out of the car, walks around the back of the car. This has prospects. I knew we were buying that house. I knew that house was ours at that point. And it's the uh, former home of uh, childhood home of Howard Caldwell. 
yes. of Channel 6 fame. Yeah. Who doesn't, if you've been around here a while, you know who he is. Yeah. 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 I yeah. mean, um, many, a couple of years ago, that was summer of 18, we were out at the National Mini Cooper Road Rally out in Denver. We got a call or a text from one of our neighbors that, hey, there's two ladies in your front yard taking a picture of the house. We're Irvington. It's, we're in the historical district. You see people, I'm sorry, it's the east side. We had interesting people all the time around there. Didn't think a thing about it. And then two years ago, we met two of Howard's daughters, Jenny and Tracy. And um, Jenny said, oh, yeah, that was Tracy in your front yard taking a picture of the house. Because <laughs> <laughs> they had never been in the house before. They had never been in the house. And Jenny has since then shared a lot of photos of Howard in his naval uniform in the backyard. A lot of it has not changed back there. Um, so that's cool. Yeah, that's really that's really cool. Well, thanks so much for joining yeah, us. Yeah, really thank you. It. Branch NMLS number 33041. Rick Ritman's NMLS number 664589. Ian Arnold's NMLS number is 1995469. Equal housing opportunity. Some restrictions apply.